In this presentation, we're gonna do the safe isolation procedure so we can isolate the consumer unit, and in this case, we're simulating a domestic dwelling in order that we can work inside that consumer unit, perhaps to add an extra circuit or carry out some of the tests safely without the supply being present within the consumer unit itself. We're fortunate in this case, we have a linked main switch in the double insulated meter towels, remote from the consumer unit itself. So we're gonna perform isolation here. So we're gonna turn off that double pole switch and prove the consumer unit itself is isolated and therefore safe to work on it. Once we have turned off the linked main switch in the towels, we will need to put on a locking device and a sign so people are aware that the supply has been isolated. Let's see how we're gonna do that. So as stated in previous presentations, I never like to turn off switches on full load. However, to give me some sort of indication that the isolating switch has turned off the installation, I might want to leave one or two circuits on. Maybe I want to leave a lighting circuit on, or in this case, I've plugged a voltage indicator into one of the socket outlets. Therefore, when I do operate the linked main switch, I have some visual clues that the supply has actually gone off before taking the consumer unit cover off and actually proving it's dead. So in the installation, we're gonna first of all limit the amount of current that the switch remote from the consumer unit will turn off. And I'm going to turn off circuit breaker, circuit breaker, circuit breaker, and circuit breaker, leaving on one of the circuit breakers here that supplies the socket outlets. We can see my plug-in voltage indicator is still illuminated, but we're not gonna be turning off the whole of that installation on full load, and we have a visual clue when we return to the installation the supply's gone off before the cover goes off. Equally, you could leave a lighting circuit on as well. So I'll go to my linked main switch remote from the consumer unit itself, and I'm gonna turn that off. This could be located away from the distribution board, and therefore, you mustn't leave it at any stage turned off and re-enter the building to see if, for instance, the voltage indicator has gone off or lights that you've left on. Regardless whether you turn off the right switch, and it could be that there's several of these link main switch feeding several flats in a building, you will still need to secure isolation with a device and a lock and a sign before leaving it to see if the installation has gone dead. Ours is adjacent to the consumer unit. We will be able to see if the plug-in voltage indicator has gone off when we turn it off but the process is still the same in the real world. You must lock it off and put a sign on it before leaving it. So we go to the linked main switch in the tails now and we turn it off. If this is remote from the consumer's unit, we won't know what's happened to the plug-in voltage indicator down here, but we have got to secure the isolation at this stage. So we'll do that next. So I need to secure the isolation. I take the device, I position it onto my linked main switch or double pole switch. I'm gonna tighten down the clamp on this style. They're all slightly different. And then we're gonna tighten that onto the actual linked main switch itself. Might need to take a pair of pliers just to make sure we nip that nice and tight. Okay, and that device now will not come off. We position the locking device over and you can see already you cannot turn back on that switch, but it still needs to be secured with a padlock. Padlock is accompanied by a sign suggesting what we're doing, like so. But I prefer the master lock. So we can do it that way. Equally, we can insert a master lock. The beauty of this is if there are several trades on site, plasterers, plumbers, painting decorators, that would be affected by reenergization of supply, everybody has a chance to insert their own padlock. So the electricians put his padlock on, plumbers, painters, carpenters, etc., can also add their padlocks on. Therefore, the supply will not be able to be returned until everybody's agreed it's safe to do so and remove their padlock. So we've locked it off at the link main switch remote from the consumer's unit. We now need to go into the consumer's unit in order to prove that it has been isolated. So I've left the linked main switch isolated and secured. I've taken the keys with me and I've come to the consumer unit before removing the consumer unit cover and proving the circuit is dead, we're gonna to need to check our voltage indicator on a proving unit, as we did in previous presentations, before we use it. So let's do that next. So before using my approved voltage indicator to prove that the consumer unit has been isolated, I need to check it first of all on a proving unit or a known supply. The easiest thing to use is a proving unit, as I probe into my proving unit, you should see the lamps illuminate on it, suggesting it's working correctly, like so. Once we've done that, we can remove it and we can take it into the installation and use it to prove safe isolation. So we've now got 
the complete consumer unit turned off. We genuinely believe the top of the switch is possibly isolated from the remote linked main switch, which we secured, signed and padlocked off. But we've still got to prove that the top of the linked main switch is isolated before we start working here. We're going to use our approved voltage indicator, which we've checked before using, and we're going to do it in exactly the same sequence as we did when we rechecked supply polarity. However, this time we don't expect any illumination of the instrument at all because the installation should be dead. So as previously stated in one of my presentations, we're going to probe on the appropriate order, the least dangerous conductor first, so I'm going to test between line and neutral first. I'm going to probe onto the neutral conductor first, then the line, then I'm going to remove it from the line and then the neutral. This time we do not expect the instrument to illuminate, so therefore it would be dead. When we recheck supply polarity, we're expecting at this stage to illuminate, but we've isolated the supply, so we're looking for it to be dead, so no illumination of the instrument itself. So if I probe on first of all onto my neutral conductor, and then onto my line, we can see that the lamps are not illuminated, suggesting it's dead. We pull off the line and we pull off the neutral. Next, I'm going to probe onto the neutral and the earth bar. This time, I'm going to probe onto the earth bar first and the neutral bar second. So we're going to probe on, first of all, if I keep my arms out of the way, we're going to probe onto the earth bar and onto the neutral. And we see that it isn't illuminated. We pull off the neutral and we pull off the earth bar. Finally, we're going to test between line and earth bar. Once again, going on the least dangerous conductor first, being the earth bar and the line. Pull off the line and pull off the earth bar. By doing all three stages, we've proved the supply coming into this distribution board or consumer unit has been isolated, yet we're not ready to work on the system just yet. One final check of our approved voltage indicator before we work on it. In case this has become damaged or faulty during the process, we need to prove again that this is in good working order before we come back into the consumer unit itself. So to prove that my voltage indicator has not become damaged or faulty during the process, I need to put it back into my proving unit and prove it's in good working order. Only after completing this test on the instrument can I suggest that the consumer unit is isolated and safe to work in. So as I probe it in, I expect to see all the lamps illuminate. So it's still in good working order, suggesting that I have proved the safe isolation of the consumer unit. Therefore, it's now safe to work in that unit. Having rechecked our proving unit, we're now happy that we can work inside the consumer's unit itself. It's fully isolated from the linked main switch in the tails. That is locked off, the keys are in my pocket, there is a sign present suggesting the supply has been turned off, and we can now go about doing tests, adding an additional circuit to the consumer unit safely. I hope this video has been some help.